saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run full cover. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. I believe in signs and wonders. I have resurrection power. Still the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. Oh, and yeah, my praise belongs to you forever. Hey. This is my testimony from death to life. His grace rewrote my story. I'll testify that Jesus Christ the righteous. I testify. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washing water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father. Our God will finish what He started. Oh, yes, our God will finish what He started. This is our, this is my testimony from dead to life. Cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I testify. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. Oh. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater yeah. things still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things still to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. My testimony from dead to life, cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify like Jesus Christ the righteous. I'll testify. This is my testimony. Yeah. This is my testimony from dead to life, cause grace rewrote my story. I'll testify like Jesus Christ the righteous. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. Come on, one more time. If you're not dead, you're not done. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things still to come. Come on, there is hope today. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things still to come. It's coming your way. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater oh. things here to come. Oh, I believe. If I'm not dead, you're not done. Greater things here to come. Oh, I believe. Yeah. This is my testimony from dead to life. This grace rewrote my story. I testify that like Jesus Christ the righteous. This is my testimony. Yeah. This is my testimony from dead to life. This grace we wrote my story. I testify that like Jesus Christ the righteous. I testify. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Great to have you with us for another powerful time in this fabulous month of splendor. 
the month of December. Great to have you with us wherever you're watching from. Ted Shuttlesworth is in the house again. Great to have you with us. Glad to be back. Good to be in the house. What's up, everybody, wherever you're watching? It's going to be a great day. Glad you're here. Take a minute to share it on the broadcast. Wherever you're watching, could be Facebook, could be on YouTube, YouTube. could be on the uh, Faith TV app. Come on. Share it. Let people know we're live. Uh, there's a word today for you. It's going to build your faith and prepare you for what God has, not just for the final moments of this year, but for this upcoming year of 2021. We're very excited. God has amazing things in store, and I'm ready to run. We are, we are ready. You've stirred our hearts this week, Ted, <laughs> and uh, thank you so much for joining us all Absolutely. these three nights. And I know tonight is going to be victorious in it every is. different way. So uh, great to have you with us. And I know you've been blessed at home uh, tonight. I, Jen, I almost can't believe it's like a bittersweet moment. It's our last night with Ted here tonight. And uh, tomorrow night's our last live broadcast of the year from nice. USA. Yep. We still got one more from Buffalo City, East London on Friday. And then we go into a repeat series of all of the broadcasts over the last 200 and close to 70 days by the time we are all said and done and what a year it's been it has been a phenomenal year and i really mean that it has been mm -hmm. a glorious year yes, yeah it has. the righteous have ne will never be forsaken their children will never be found asking for bread and That's that right. is exactly what we have seen the word do it has proven to be true again and again and again. And we are so happy and grateful that you have been on that journey with us to see for ourselves first-hand testimony of the goodness of God in spite of what's been going on around us. That's what right. a wonderful, wonderful privilege it is to be a child of God. Yeah. And I know that from the testimonies we have seen, they just keep pouring in on how God has proven himself to be exactly who his word says he is, faithful and good. There is no darkness in him. There is nothing else but goodness and yeah. generosity. And because of that, we get to represent him. And so yeah. we want to wish every single one of you a blessed two hours right now. We know that the power of God is going to overshadow you. In fact, I feel that we are going to get to a place of high praise today. Uh, don't you feel the same? Come on, we it's are. It's almost like the, the atmosphere is already exploding with energy because I know before you even tuned in, before any of us came into the studio, God was already set up to give you a breakthrough in the area of praise today. You That's are going right. to see that everything that was holding you back or holding you down or distracting you from His absolute blessing is going to run out of your room as you begin to praise Him with all of your heart. So right. you are set up for victory right now. That's right. You, I, I want to do something. I want to do something right now, Ted. All right. I know how much you don't like rhymes. <laughs> okay. I know how much you don't like anything that rhymes. So I'm going to ask every one of you, rhyme the word Ted. All right, come on. I, I want to I wanna get some in the comment section. All right, if you've got a rhyme, come on, wherever you are. Dave Lutke says, another great fed by Ted moment tonight. <laughs> come on, isn't that awesome? All right, you've got it, That's but funny. you've got it. The secret is you have to rhyme it with Ted. All right, so come on. I, I need some Facebook comments over there. We're just going to we're going to rub it in a little bit here tonight. What, what do you think about that, Ted? Fed by Ted. It's a. I'm going to start that as a brand. You, you can hashtag <laughs> Fed by Ted. Trademarking it. Trademarking it. We're going to sell it. We're going to sell it over. All right, so come on. If you've been blessed by Ted Shuttlesworth, give a shout out, but make sure it rhymes. Okay, give us a good rhyme over there, and we'll we'll read it out over the air. We'll. we'll says Ted is wed. Ted is wed. <laughs> Just hopefully there's nobody violent that's saying Ted is dead. I don't want to see, see any of those things. Oh, All right, but uh, come on, get on Facebook, onto the live feed, and uh, myfaith.tv if you're not there yet. Get it, and uh, I hope you're watching your feed as well. Yep, yep. All right, so maybe some of your people out there that follow you can come up with some good rhymes as well. What do you think? I think we've trained them well enough that they know better. <laughs> I don't know. That's right. oh, wait. wait, they're getting on board. Fed by Ted. They're getting on board. They're, they're getting on board. Ted said, after all those comments, Teddy's red. <laughs> Teddy's right. red. Yeah, that's true. Teddy's well bred. <laughs> Advocate Cannon says, Teddy's well bred. <laughs> we led and fed and not spiritually dead. 
while listening to Ted, the, oh, the wow. Hog family say. Wow. Ted has wisdom in his head. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Come on. Led by Ted. Come on. Teddy. What, what is that? Hashtag Teddy Bear Love. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. And Da said Ted. All right. Your name's Desiree. All right. And now ahead because of Ted. All right. Someone on the West Coast yeah. says, fantastic morning with Ted, but I'm just climbing out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Oh, I love it. You, you guys are brilliant. You know how they respond. They, I mean, they really quick. I, I just love this. I'm just, I'm just wondering where the young people are. You know, where, where's the... Um, you know, the Josiahs of the world, you know. Come on, Jay, where are you? You normally, uh, Jay's normally good with this type of thing. And uh, Jay, Narasami, I don't know where you are. You're normally good as well. Look what Colin Young said. For two days, we've been fed by Ted. Nothing more needs to be said. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Oh, I love this. Thank you, Colin. Very All good. right. Thanks to Ted, we now, we know the head. Okay, there we go. All right, Ted, they want you to sing as well. Absolutely. All right, Ted, Ted is well led. Ted, where is your bed? Oh, <laughs> Rosemary word. said. All right, Ted, you're the best. Come on, come on, Ted, waiting to be fed tonight. And uh, Ted is the best. So um, right. hashtag Ted, we'd rather dial triple five four one zero instead. <laughs> right. Keep voting. Keep voting. <laughs> Keep on voting. Oh, boy. All right. Stay ahead while you're with Ted. <laughs> all right. Great, great to have you all with us. Just some fun for today always to get us going. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, quite, quite a moment, you know. Uh, end of the year coming down on us. Uh, victorious year. Truly a victorious year, Ted. Absolutely. Stepping into 2021. 20, uh, and I love what you said about a year of running. Because I believe the local church, uh, Brother Kenneth Copeland, has declared 2021 the year of the local church, mm -hmm. where the local church will excel and expand, where the local explode, church will expand, where the local goodness. church will uh, just expand in every area, where souls are going to come to know the Lord like never before in the local church. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's almost like this is the season of 2021 for the local church, which puts it, well, what is the local church? We are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The people of God. And that's Absolutely. why I love your word where you say run mm -hmm. in 2021 because Absolutely. that's really what's going to happen. All of us are going to run yeah. as local church congregants. Yes. We're going to see the body of Christ rise up like never before in 2021. Yeah. Absolutely. Our, our pastor, Bishop Rick Thomas, is getting ready to release the word of the Lord on December the 31st. But one of the things that he's been encouraging us is that, uh, as you said, the local church is going to rise up mm -hmm. in this upcoming year. And we're going to see, and he, he just gave us a just a short preview yeah. of this word a few nights ago, but we're going to recover, we're going to reclaim, we're going to rise up. And he went through the, what the Lord spoke to him. Wow. And just like Brother Copeland, the local church, there's an empowerment that is going to be realized. It's not Praise that we're going to receive power. We have power, but that power has to be realized and then used in order to release what God has for this earth. And I'm telling you, yeah. I've got an expectancy to see believers operating at full potential. That's Come the key. Believers on. operating at full potential. Hallelujah. In fact, those of you that are watching, I want you to put it in the comments. I will operate at full potential in 2021. We're putting aside every weight that would so easily beset us, as the Bible says, and we're getting ready to run like we never have in the Holy Ghost at full capacity, full potential in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. It's going to be a great, great year. Now, just very quickly, right at the top of this hour, because I don't want to, I, I don't want to get into this type of stuff a little bit later on the program, we have two positions that have officially opened at Faith Broadcasting Network. All right? And uh, we are uh, putting out a, a, a challenge to two different individuals all right, now this has nothing to do with me. This is the board of directors that will do all the interviews and everything. But we have two positions that have opened up in South Africa at our Faith uh, Broadcasting Studios down in Buffalo City, East London. So what does that mean? That means in order to apply for the position, you have to be prepared to relocate. All right, to Buffalo City. First position, and on the uh, screen is coming an email address. All right, positions at myfaithtv.com. All right, positions with an S at myfaithtv.com. You'll see it on the screen. 
The first position is we, ha we have one or two positions opening in our full-time worship faith band. All right, so we have two positions that have opened up in the worship faith band of Faith Broadcasting Network. They are a full-time band that work with us all over the world, and uh, they are based in East London, South Africa, okay, down in Buffalo City. So we have a position there of a full-time worship leader, all right? Now, you need to be able to, number one, relocate to Buffalo City. You need to be talented, anointed, and submitted, all right? You need to be able to lead worship, and you need to be able to coach and lead a team, and you need to make sure that you can play an instrument, all right? The keys or uh, the piano or something, you need to be able to play. So that position is open, and you can see it, positions at myfaithtv.com. Take a screen grab of this. Tell people if you know someone, all right, you have to email your CV, all right, your resume. You have to email it to them. Wherever you are, there's a full-time position that has opened for you in that position. Then we have a second position that is also becoming available from 2021 as we move forward and as we continue to expand. There is a, we are looking for a management accountant, all right, a management accountant. And you need to have at least between eight and 10 years of experience, all right, a management accountant. You need between eight and 10 years experience. You must have a Bachelor of Commerce degree with an accounting major. All right, you need to have a Bachelor of Commerce degree with an accounting major, and you must have experience in corporate taxation matters. All right, you must have experience in corporate taxation matters. Two positions, a management accountant, all right, and a full-time worship leader and piano player, available positions for East London, Buffalo City, South Africa. All right, both those positions are available from 2021. What do you have to do? You have to email a letter stating who you are, about your salvation experience, you're a born-again child of God, and you send the CV to that email address. Now, we have a disclaimer. Every email that goes out will automatically come back to you a response that we have received your email, and should you not hear from anyone from faith uh, television, then your application was unsuccessful, all right? And we're saying that again publicly, all right? So if you do not get a response, you will get an automatic response when you send your email, and then if you do not get a response within the next two weeks, know that your application was unsuccessful. They will then shortlist, the uh, Human Resources Department will then shortlist and they will then have the necessary Zoom interviews and telephonic interviews with you. And uh, if you move into phase two of the application process uh, of that. So uh, I just wanted to throw that out there. We, we love it when we can actually just share these things, Ted, because that gives people an opportunity to know, hey, he has a possibility if there's a call of God on their life into full-time ministry and to get involved with Faith Broadcasting Network, this is a good opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so you that's don't what want we're to take for. your talents and your gifts and then not operate in them. Yeah. Biblical principle: If the master has given you a gift, don't bury it in the ground. That's right. Use it, multiply it, let it affect and impact the kingdom of God. It needs to be done more now than ever. That's right. So applications open tonight for those two positions, and they will stay open for the 14 days, and uh, then we will close applications, and you will then get to know about that in a few weeks, all right? After 14 days, we will close all applications. So spread the word and uh, tell people, position number one, a full-time worship leader, all right? A full-time worship leader, you must be able to play an instrument, all right? Preferably the piano or a keyboard, or if you can play guitar, that can also qualify you, all right? And then we're looking for also a full-time musician, a piano keyboard player, filled with the Spirit of God, all right? All these positions are born again, Spirit-filled people, all right, that know how to pray in tongues, that are filled with the fire of God, okay? And then we're looking for a management uh, accountant, a management accountant to be able to help us in the accounting area. So those two positions, and uh, you have to email positions at myfaithtv.com.
www.ebaymcdonald.com. Write that email down. Take a quick screen grab of the screen right now or a photo of it that you can then get those uh, CVs off. But the condition is you have to be prepared to relocate to East London, Buffalo City, South Africa, the beautiful city on the coast. All right, and uh, it's very important for you. Okay, so those are two great positions that are opening for you. And on Facebook, we'll also just post that email address in the Facebook feed so you do have that. All right, so I wanted to share that with you very quickly. Tomorrow night is going to be, Jen, our final broadcast from uh, Faith USA Studio for 2020. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, it will be our last broadcast. Tomorrow night, Pastor Nikki and Lillian will be with us. Their family will be with us. Our family is going to be together. We've got some funnies to show you. We've got some clips. We've got a lot to show you. It's going to be a great night tomorrow night, and we're going to be praying with every single one of you and trusting God for a miracle in your life. So it's going to be a powerful two hours tomorrow night from our studio right here at Marco Island, Florida Studio, USA. Then on Friday night will be the last night of live broadcasting for, for Faith Today, that is, for Faith Today from Buffalo City, East London. All right, and uh, Pastor Kevin and Chantel and Brad and Jazan will be sharing that with you on Friday night. Then we've still got the Sunday broadcasts as normal going right through the season. We will have all the Sunday live broadcasts. Those are not stopping in any way, but the Faith Today will be uh, going on hold. We're having a production break, and we'll be back with you live again Monday the 10th of, uh, Monday the 11th, sorry, Monday the 11th of January. We'll be back live in the same time slot. All right, Monday through Friday. So what are we going to do? Listen, it's going to be very exciting next year. Next year, we're going to be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. But the Friday is going to be dedicated to the young people, and it's going to be the next live on Friday nights. All right, so Friday nights is going to be dedicated to them. Thursday nights will be from East London and Buffalo City, uh, South Africa, Wednesday nights, I'm so excited about that as well. Pastor Nikki and Lillian, they'll be back then in South Africa, Jen, and they'll be broadcasting uh, from their studios in South Africa because we've said they can't not be a part of this. Exactly. All right, so they'll be broadcasting from there as well on Wednesday nights also. So I'm excited about that. Well, you know, Pastor Lillian and Pastor Nikki have been such an encouragement to us and I know the sacrifice that they've they've actually had well okay it was something that they had no choice in yeah. <laughs> being locked down here in the United States over that whole period of time it's been eight months of having them minister to us and what a blessing it has been and the comments and testimonies again just how we have been so blessed by having them being a voice on this network and so we can't let them go we have to keep hearing from them the on. wisdom and the goodness and the grace and the faith the the supernatural uh, blessing of God that is on that ministry it cannot be kept for just their circle of influence it's got to get to the nations and so even though they have their uh, what is it my SMI, my SMI. Oh, I did it right my SMI they've got that program coming through on Sundays but this is going to be a treat every single week you will get to hear from them and you will be blessed by their program so we are so excited that they're coming on board with us that's right and uh, this network is going to be bursting with supernatural power just for you and it's going to be absolutely amazing okay so they're having a family vacation right now their boys have joined them but they will be with us tomorrow night uh, on the program live right here with us it'll be our final night and they're coming in for that and then uh, we all start our little uh, celebration of vacation uh, straight <laughs> after that and uh, ted i know you guys are also going to have a little family time yeah we are. and uh, celebrate christmas together so uh, looking forward to it's, it. it's going to be it's a great time for families around the, the world isn't it yeah absolutely and you know it's it's a very important thing i uh, was talking to my wife about this the more you do and of course we want to be hard workers impactful effective for the kingdom but you never ever want to uh, forget about your family. Come on. Yeah. Your family is your very first ministry. I've told people first this. Priority. We've dealt with this multiple times on the broadcast. My relationship with God is first, but with my family is second. Come on. Ministry comes after your family. Come on. What does it profit to uh, gain the whole world and lose your own soul? Come or on. lose your soul of your child? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so we focus hard on not only uh, raising them up properly, but 
showing them love and, and making sure that they're enjoying every aspect of ministry as we do it for the Lord. Yeah. And they love it. It's all they've known literally from two weeks old. Yeah. Our children started traveling full time on the road from two weeks old. Wow. And it's all they know, but they love it. They, they have grown up in revival. Yes. And it makes all the difference for your children when yes. you keep them in the presence of God every yes. day. Yeah. Very yeah. good. You, you know, this morning when I, when I woke up and, um, and I realized what day it was this morning. You know, inside of me, I got so happy and excited and blessed. And, and I want to share what I'm talking about because that's why, Mike, your song was just so spot on again today. And uh, your testimony and that, that, that song. Because 21 years ago today, our firstborn son died. 21 years ago today. And... Uh, and Jenny and I suffered that terrible loss of our firstborn. And, uh, and I woke up with such a joy today, knowing that I'm coming onto the program with you to be able to share with you the goodness of God. And I thought to myself, and this is what made me excited, Ted. 21 years ago, we were faced with a challenge of throwing in the towel, quitting, giving up. The enemy was, was so upon us, the pressure on us, the, the determination of the enemy to sidetrack us and take us off focus, cause our marriage to end at that point, bring division into us uh, in, in every area. You, you know, when you suffer loss like that, you know, you want to play the blame game. You, you, you know, all the thoughts, everything that comes into your mind. And now we, we, we're celebrating 29 years of marriage. Praise God. Okay, coming up. But, but I, I want to just be real here for a moment and, 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 and explain to you the pressure of us saying, well, the doctor's saying we'll never have children and don't ever think about it again and all that negative pressure, uh, the, the feeling of God, you let us down, but not ever saying that because that wasn't true. And all of these thoughts and emotions, 21 years ago today, were in our hearts and in our minds. And we faced, 21 years ago, one of the greatest challenges I think any minister of the gospel ever has to face, where our firstborn went to be with Jesus. And I want you to understand something. Even as I received a text this morning from our dear friend, Pastor Rob and Bev Dutton, who watch it. They watch every night with us. And uh, Pastor Rob was my mentor. Pastor Rob was a man that spoke into my life. He's now officially retired as a pastor. Great, great man of God. And uh, shook nations just with who he was and the region where he was operating as a pastor. And Pastor Rob, every single year on this particular day will still to this day send us a text and just say, we celebrate his life today with you. And I thought about it for a moment and I thought, Pastor Rob, you are the same man that spoke into my life. He was my Sunday school teacher wow. when I was a young boy. I'll never forget, I, I grew up and, uh, and he had such an impact, such a great man of God mm -hmm. in my life. And I, and I thought of, of mentors like that. Where would I be today had it not been for men like him who have gone before us, who could get around Jen and I, encourage us, hold us, and keep us strong through the trials, through the tribulations, through the difficulties that we had to face. And uh, Doc, you were there that day. You'll never, you'll never forget that day as well. Waldo and Sharon were there with us. They, they were in the hospital with us and... Uh, and uh, Rob and Bev were there and other family members and everything. And, and when we faced this, this tragedy in our lives of our firstborn's promotion, that was a moment where we could have given up. That's what, that's what I wanted to say today because we could have just quit. We could have said, Lord, we're out of here. We could have gone into secular business we could have landed in a mess in our marriage. We could have landed in a divorce situation. Whatever, whatever that pain, that bitterness could have caused, we could have gone that way. But by the grace of God, but by the faith of the word of the testimony, 
that is on the inside of us, that we would know Him, that we would love Him. The greatest thing in the whole Bible, Jesus says, that you would love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And Jen and I, in that moment of absolute pain, heartache, and devastation, chose never to accuse God. We chose never to blame Him. We chose never to speak negatively. We chose at that time, it was one of the most difficult things we had to do, but we chose at that moment, God, we would never stop trusting You. We would continue to love You through it all. I want someone to get a, a message out of this today because I want you to understand something. Quitters never win. Winners never quit. No matter what you face, no matter the pain, the heartache, everything around you, keep pushing forward. Keep running the race. Keep pursuing the call and purpose of God on your life. Why do I say that? Because look at today, Teddy. 21 years later. Think about it. 21 years later, we would not be sitting here. We would not have the network and the the viewership, and we would not be in the homes like we are right now. We would not be doing the purpose and plan of God mm -hmm. had we chosen to give up and to quit. But we chose to run. Amen. And that's why it's been such a blessing this week to me because I, I kind of knew this day was coming. But here's the thing. Don't ever stop running towards Him. He's right there in front of you. Keep running. Keep following in His purpose and plan. Keep pushing on in all that God has for you. This is for someone that decides, that said today even, I, I, I wanted to give up. I, I wanted to quit. Don't give up. I'm here today to tell you, don't give up. Come on. Don't give up. There is nothing too difficult for Him. There is no pain that He can't heal. There is no sadness that He can't remove. I, now, we have memories we have memories and those will, I believe, be there forever. But we choose to focus on all the good things. We choose to focus on the promises. We choose to focus. That's why uh, we even named him Joshua Samuel. That's why we, we gave him those names. Because we knew he was tenacious. We knew he was a fighter. But we also knew with the word Samuel that we had to release him and we had to give him to God. And that's what was so important for us, where we could... Bring him and say, Lord, we, we give him to you. Have your way, whatever you want. And we stood in faith, but we knew the purpose and plan for his life. And, and we know there's rejoicing going on in heaven. We know he's there right now shouting. We know he's there celebrating with grandpa and all the others that have gone before and all the uncles and aunts and grandfathers of faith that have gone before. And that's why. We can come into your home today with a tenacity and a boldness like never before. Though a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, it will not come near you. For your rod and your staff, they comfort us. They carry us and they cause us to push on as we pursue the plan and purpose of God. So I, I wanted to share that, Jen. I think something that um, I just feel bursting on the inside of me is this, to understand that even... You know, I would like to say this. <laughs> Where you are right now, before um, things come your way, before, you, and I mean, Jesus said, there's always going to be things that come our way that's going to kind of feel like the world is taken out from underneath you. You know, like the ground is taken up or, or yeah. things happen by surprise or things happen that you never even thought or imagined would happen. But, but there's something that has always proved to be the truth, and that is before even these calamities take place or before you even step into a place where you, um, I know you can't, you know, kind of preempt it or know when it's going to happen or if things happen. What I'm trying to say is this. Be so secure in knowing how good your God is yeah. and be so convinced in your own heart that He is only good and that His plans for you are always to bring Him glory and to bring you victory. And when you are convinced in the good character of God, then no matter what comes against you or how devastating it is, if your foundation is so sure and so secure 
on the character of your God, I can promise you this because I'm a living testimony of it. I will promise you that in every step of what you go through, you will feel the love of God. You will feel yourself completely enveloped in His care, in His tenderness, in His mercy, and His joy will be your strength. I promise you that because I've experienced it. And even when we went through what we went through, I was convinced. I went going in there convinced of the goodness of God, convinced of His faithfulness towards me. And I remember uh, even just, it was about a day after um, we lost Joshua, a day after he went to be with the Lord. I remember sitting at my kitchen table, and I know that I've mentioned this before. I was at the kitchen table, I had my cup of coffee, and I was just alone in my house. And the Lord spoke to me so clearly, and He said, Jenny, I need you to tell me what is on your heart concerning me. How's that? I knew it, I, I know His voice, and He spoke so clearly. He said, Jenny, what are your thoughts concerning me right now? And you know what I said? I said, God, I know you. I know you. I've known you from when I was a little girl. There has never been one moment that you have not had your hand on me. There's never been one moment that you never wanted anything but your very best for me. And I do not feel any different about you now. I don't know why this happened. I know it was not you that did it. But I do know that this is not the end. This is not the end of my journey. And if you want to know what my thoughts are towards you, I still believe that you are only good good right. and that you love me and let me tell you I know when he he set me up he set me up to say those words because he knew that if I would confess how I felt in my heart about his goodness and his good character and his faithfulness that he would immediately the moment I spoke those words out it ignited my faith again in him because faith comes by hearing and hearing the truth of who God is and what his word says and as I spoke those words Faith rose up on the inside of me and I honestly felt like I was cushioned by His goodness and His grace and His mercy and His love. And there has never been a time that I have been without that feeling and that security that I have in Him. Yeah. And even though the days, there were days that were difficult, there were days that were glorious, and there were those that, like I said, that you kind of go, oh God, I have to train this mind to speak the truth about you again. And let me tell you, through all of that, what happened? The miraculous. We were blessed with three healthy, wonderful children. After who, they said it would never happen. After they said it would never happen, God's word still came, came out on. to be the truth. Come on. It still came out to be the truth. So if I can say anything to you, Isaiah 61 verse 3, it speaks about how God gives us the oil of joy for mourning. The garment, and listen to the Amplified Classic says, expressive praise instead of a heavy burdened and failing spirit. He gives you beauty instead of ashes. That is the God that we serve. I'm telling you the best way to experience the mercy and the goodness and the strength of God in difficult times is to right now decide inside of your heart right. to be resolute on this one thing. No matter what, God is always good. He is always faithful and He will be more than enough to you That's for whatever right. you face. Right. You do not have to go through a period of mourning. Uh, okay, look, what I'm saying is, yes, we're not going to ignore what happens around us, but God is in you right. and He will cause you to be full of joy, right. full of peace, full of grace and have a victorious spirit in the midst of the greatest calamity in your life. That is my testimony. I am who God has made me to be so completely confident in His love in me that I'm telling you, you won't even find scars on my heart. You don't even find scars. All you find is victory marks of how He has lifted me in the pain and brought such healing, brought such deliverance to the extent that it brings healing to others. That can be your testimony too. So, And I saw on the Facebook feed just after Andre was sharing what had happened, I see person after person 
saying, well, we lost our daughter in this year. We lost our son and, you know, all these things. And it, I don't think there's one person on this earth that hasn't gone through some kind of pain or some kind of tragedy. But our testimony will always be this, that God is our oil of joy. God right. is our peace. God is the one who is the lifter of our head. You don't have to walk in that valley and stay walking in that valley. <laughs> Let me tell you, He is your comfort. He is your strength. And He will pull you right up to a place of extreme joy in Him. It is real. <laughs> and I think that's the greatest joy that I have. It really is real. I'm not speaking about something that happened to somebody else. This is what happened to us. And God proved Himself to be exactly who his word says he is. I'm his greatest fan. That's all I can say. He is amazing. That's right. He that's is right. amazing. I, that, that's why I'm just so excited. You know, that scripture says, Yea, thou walk through the valley. That's right. I go through. I don't stay I in the valley, Ted. Stop, I push right through every single one of you. The reason we pushed through, mm. God in his goodness provided us with three miracle babies. All right. Within 24 months after we were told it would never, ever happen. All right, and said there is no way, no chance, impossible. I'm telling you, God turns the impossible into a possible. He loves impossibles. When you get an impossible, I, I want you to understand my God is greater. He is more. He is supernatural, everything that I need Him to be. And I want you to understand this tonight for your life. Let faith arise inside on, of your heart. Right. You are going through Let the valley. You are not stopping on. in the valley. You are going through, and we, we're gonna, we need to praise through that valley, Ted. That's right. All right, this is what I know you're even going to be speaking about. We're going to run. We're not going to allow anything to hold us back. No circumstance of yesterday, no bitterness of yesterday. That's right. No heartache of yesterday, no pain of a day before. It's not going to stop me from praising my God. It's not going to stop me from loving my God. It's not going to stop me from having faith in my God in accordance to the Word. Amen. That's the key. When we talk about that praise you're referencing, yeah. praise keeps you in a place on. not only of expectancy, it keeps you in a place of production. Come on. Let me give you something from the Word that will stir your faith. This is why the devil wants you to stop praising God. Number one, his praise, God's praise, which is always do him, it puts you in position to constantly be in his presence yes. because he inhabits the praises of his people, mm. Psalm 22 and verse 3. But that's not the end, it's the beginning. Come on. Because come when on. you get into his presence, there's fullness of joy. Come on. That's, that's right. Psalm 1611. In his presence is fullness of joy, mm -hmm. and at his right hand, pleasures forevermore. Mm. Think about this that is the element, I'm talking about joy that keeps you constantly strengthened to fight the good fight of faith. Exactly. Why do I say that? Because the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's right. When you praise Him, doesn't matter what the circumstances say, when you praise Him, joy is your story. Amen. When joy becomes your story, Amen. strength is your outcome. Come on. You know, I was in a situation where uh, we had just finished, many people have never heard this testimony, but we just finished a, test, a tent meeting, and the devil attacked my first daughter uh, with a blood disease and a heart condition. She right. was less than two years old, and uh, she went from being vibrant and energetic to lost all energy, eyes rolled in the back of her head, I had to carry her around in my arms. The doctor said, this is not good. She has a blood disease. She has a heart condition. She'll have to be on heart medication for the rest of her life. But my wife and I began to fast, pray, and Come praise on. God Come on. Come in on. the hospital, yeah. in the intensive care unit. And my cousin, Jonathan Shuttlesworth, called me at that time. We were talking on the phone in the, uh, in the hospital, and I was joking around with him and all this stuff. Well, after he hung up with me, he called his mother. And she said, he, she said uh, he said, I just spoke with Ted. She said, well, I guess you've heard they're in the hospital with their daughter. He said, no, I didn't know that. He said, they're having an issue? Oh, yeah, she's in serious condition. He said, I just spoke to him for 45 minutes on the phone, and he was laughing and joking. He never mentioned it one time. Come on. Why? Come the on, outlook on, is different. Come on, come on. The outlook of come faith on, is different than the outlook of unbelief. Exactly. And faith sees the victory. Faith always sees the victory, and 
faith acts like it has the victory. Yes. Even if it's in the middle of a fight, it acts like it has the victory. And joy is that element that allows you to stay in victory. Hallelujah. Not only is joy your strength, but the Bible says this. It says a merry heart does good mm -hmm. like a medicine. Mm -hmm. It adds health to your physical body. It adds strength to your life. Do you know Proverbs 17, 22 was written thousands of years ago. A merry heart does good like a medicine. Doctors are just now catching up scientifically with what the Word of God told us thousands of years ago. That now they're telling us stress can cause problems physically, stress can cause problems mentally, and that all these depression, anxiety, things that we're dealing with in our society are causing now physical problems in people. Where the Holy Spirit inspired His Word thousands of years ago telling us, if you'll walk in the joy, it won't just be strength to your body. It will be health mm -hmm. to your flesh. Come on, come and on. when you praise God, as we're talking about, it is what I heard one preacher say, it is the cheapest access into the instant presence of God. Come on. Instant access <laughs> into the presence of God. Yes. He cannot leave a praising person alone. Exactly. Come on. God will never leave a praising Thank person you, alone. Amen. I want you to put it in the comments. God doesn't leave praising people alone. <laughs> and one of the things that I love is if you look at that verse of Scripture that's found in uh, Psalm 16, 11 and Psalm 22, 3, He inhabits the praises of His people. Mm -hmm. Did you know that there's a New Testament gospel passage that is really a New Testament fulfillment of Psalm 22, 3? He inhabits the praises of his people. It's found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10. And Jesus and his disciples are leaving the city of Jericho. And they're not holding a meeting. They're not ministering to the crowds. They're not having a prayer line. They're leaving. They're leaving. But as they're leaving, the Bible says many people are around the outside of the city. Many people. And as many people are out there, Jesus doesn't stop for any of them. And all of a sudden, there's a blind man on the side of the road who heard that Jesus is passing by. And you know what the crowd was saying? Jesus of Nazareth is coming. But he didn't say Jesus of Nazareth. He cried out, Jesus, son of David, right. have mercy on me. That's it was right. Bartimaeus. Notice the difference between what he heard and what he said. He heard Jesus of Nazareth. Come on. That was his natural name. Come on. That was saying the carpenter's coming. Yes. The son of Mary, but we don't even know who his father really was because she was pregnant before she got with Joseph. They were labeling him as a natural man. Yeah. But he knew a natural man, a carpenter, can't heal these eyes. So he didn't call out for Jesus of Nazareth. That's good. He called out for son of David. Yes. If you catch this, it will blow your mind and it'll encourage your spirit. Bartimaeus, by what he said and what he called out, was literally praising Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because by saying, Son of David, Bartimaeus was saying, I believe you are who you say you are. Mm -hmm. I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you're the Messiah. I believe you're the Anointed One. And notice what happened. The moment that Jesus heard what Bartimaeus was saying, notice, Jesus probably passed by hundreds of people as he left Jericho. But he heard what one man said, son of David. And notice what he had to do. He stopped and turned and said, bring him to me. Yes. Why did Jesus say, bring him to me? Because he had to fulfill this Old Testament principle that God inhabits, <laughs> dwells in. On, lives in the praises of his people. He couldn't keep walking. Catch this, this is so powerful. Yes. Jesus was not allowed to keep walking once he heard the praise. Exactly. He could not have left Bartimaeus behind. It was impossible. <laughs> he was God in the flesh and praises were coming forth. And when praises were coming forth, he had to, by virtue of his nature, 
inhabit those praises. Come on. So he Come said, on. bring him to me. And Bartimaeus, I love this act of faith. Bartimaeus, the first thing he did was praise. But look at the second thing he did. He stood up and he threw off his garment. Come on. That's an important point it's because gone. his gone. garment identified him mm -hmm. as a beggar. Mm -hmm. Come on. The reason he had to be a beggar is because he was blind. Exactly. He was saying, now that I've got the attention of the miracle worker, I won't be needing the beggar's garments anymore. He kept, before he got his healing, before the miracle took place, he cast off what identified him as a loser. And he said, from this moment forward, now that I've got an encounter coming with the miracle worker, I won't need to beg these eyes won't be blind, and they brought him to Jesus. Wow. And one of the things that blew my mind is that not only did Jesus respond to his praise, but then Jesus gave him an opportunity to speak what he wanted. See? Ooh. That's it. Come on. That's now, can on. I say something? Your praise <laughs> gives you the access mm. to ask. Mm. Come on. Your praise gives you the access to ask. We don't just run into his presence and start demanding things. We come into his gates with thanksgiving. That's step one. Then we come into his courts with praise. praise. There are a lot of people trying to petition God for things. They've not yet thanked him. They've not yet praised him. Mm -hmm. And he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. We don't just rush into the throne room and start making demands. We thank him. Yes. And then we praise him. And it puts us in position then to ask him. Yes. And Bartimaeus had already uh, praised him. And now he'd taken a step of faith, tossed off the garment, and now stood in front of the master. And Jesus, being full of wisdom, truly said, right. what would you have me to do? <laughs> now, I've made the mistake before of yeah. assuming what people need from God. In fact, I've looked at them and said, well, I can guess what kind of a miracle they need. But I, I learned this lesson well enough to know. I was speaking here in Florida uh, a few years ago, the very beginning of our traveling ministry. And uh, I was having an altar call. Pe come forward if you need a miracle. And I saw here comes an old woman from the back on a walker. Tennis balls on the bottom. Mm -hmm. Took her a while to get to the altar. And I could have said, well, I see she's a, in a crippled condition and needs to be healed from the crippling condition. I could have just been you know, young and bold. I take authority and just grabbed her and started going on praying for it, cursing arthritis and everything else. But I learned this lesson from Jesus. Identify where their That's faith good. is at. That's That's good. Good. And I said what Jesus said, Sister, what do you want the Lord to do for you? Here was her answer. I want God to save my niece. <laughs> See, wow. I could have gone all day long shaking her and praying. That's not why she came. That's right. That's she right. came to stand in faith for the salvation of her family member. When we join our faith for the thing together that's the right thing, that power of agreement expedites answers to prayer. Yeah. Praise gave him access to ask. And Jesus could see that he was blind. He was feeling his way to the master. He could see he was blind. But notice, Jesus wanted to locate Bartimaeus' yeah, faith. Yeah. He said, what would you have me to do for you? He said, I would like to receive my sight. Come and on. when he spoke that, that word of faith, that request, that followed a praise, caused his miracle. Do you realize what Jesus just did, what Bartimaeus' praise did? Bartimaeus' praise got him a blank check from heaven. Mm -hmm. oh, come, exactly. on. come on. His praise. You know why? Because there's nothing God won't do for praising people. There's nothing God won't do for people who are accessing his presence on a regular basis. You know why most people don't have anything? They don't ask for anything. You have not because you ask not. You know why most people won't ask God? Because they feel inferior. Right. They feel ashamed or the devil's lied to them and said, you shouldn't, look at your life. You shouldn't be asking God for anything. But something changes when you thank him and when you praise him. It puts you into his presence. And in his presence, shame has to leave. Exactly. Depression has to leave. Fear has to leave. And when you're filled then, watch this, by spending time in his presence, when you're filled with not shame, confidence. Mm -hmm. Not depression, joy. Not fear. Then you've got 
all of this peace. And what happens is it transforms you from a person that didn't feel like they could petition God to now someone like Hebrews 4.16 says, let us boldly approach the throne of grace that we may find help. So notice this. Just by that catalyst of praising God, it sparks joy, peace, and boldness instead of shame. And it puts you in position to ask God for great things. Ask God for great things. Do you know, and I, was, I had this proverb opened up, this is something that many people, I feel, they skip right over it and they miss this principle. In fact, those of you that are watching on YouTube, on uh, Facebook, for our channel, as well as Periscope, put this in the comments. I must take responsibility for my strength. Hmm. This is a thought that if you'll do this one thing, you'll protect your victory going into 2021. Thank you. You'll protect your victory. The devil wants to steal your victory. Protect it. Yes. How? I'm responsible for my strength. Not God. God has given you the means whereby you can build your strength or lose it. Look, Proverbs 24.10 is eye-opening. It's very short, but it's very profound. If you faint in the day of adversity, then your strength is too small. Wow. If you faint in the day of adversity, yep. then your strength is too small. Mm -hmm. So what it's saying is there are people that will lose in the day of adversity and others will be victorious, mm -hmm. but it's based on the level of their strength. strength. So bring it to a New Testament perspective. What did Paul the Apostle command the church in Ephesus? Be strong in the Lord mm -hmm. and in the power of, of his, his might. might. Yes. You don't have to command someone to do something that's automatic. Come on. I don't have to command my son, be a male, be a boy, be a man. Right. He already is one. He already is one. But then be strong must mean that not everybody not automatic. is yes. automatically strong. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Just because you're a Christian, you might even be Holy Ghost filled. But did you know that there are Holy Ghost filled Christians struggling right now? There are Holy Ghost filled Christians that are battling and losing because that's not the prerequisite for victory. It is the beginning place. It's the fuel. But you can be, think about this, you could be a multimillionaire Right. and still starve to death because you don't have access to your funds. What if you were a multimillionaire, had no check, no debit card, no PIN number, no way to withdraw the funds from the account? You couldn't even afford a small packet of noodles from the grocery store. Ten cents in the United States. Couldn't do it. You don't have access. So you could die by starvation as a multimillionaire. See, that's the same for every believer. Every single believer is a supernatural multi-billionaire because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 that you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. So don't pray for more blessings. You've got them all. There's no more to get than all. You've been blessed with every. That means there's no more left. But what's now the key? Pulling. Those blessings, they don't help you in the supernatural. You need them in the natural. What good does it have the pro do to have the promise of healing but no manifestation of healing? What good does it do to have the promise of supernatural financial blessing but never have the manifestation of it? What good does it do to have the promise of freedom from addiction because of the Holy Ghost but still remain an addiction? See, theoretical blessings are the same as no blessings. You have to know how to reach into the supernatural realm, by faith grab that promise, and pull it into the natural realm. Come on. That is done by taking responsibility for your strength, building your strength. So what did Paul say? He said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So we now have a, a responsibility to build our strength. See? One of the ways that we build strength, as we just talked about, mm -hmm. is a daily dedication to praising the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you'll praise Him, it brings joy, and joy 
bring strength. Mm -hmm. It's like a domino effect. I begin to praise, I jump into joy, joy brings me strength. Mm -hmm. And then I praise more, I get more joy, I get more strength. I praise more. I'll tell you, it'll even affect your physical body. Come on. Do you know I used to be a music director at our church in Virginia Beach? And uh, one morning, now see, I'd already painted myself into the corner because I told all of our, uh, I told all of our volunteers, we don't stay home from church. We don't call out from church. We don't skip church. I don't care if you're dealing with something, you come, I'll pray for you. I'll lay hands on you. God will touch you. And so I woke up one Easter Sunday morning and I was, I had every symptom in my body that you could imagine. I had such a, 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 a migraine headache. I opened my eyes to look. I couldn't even see anything. I just saw white spots, all I could see. Mm. I had, my stomach was, every joint ached, everything. I had fever. I had every uh, symptom you could think of. I, I could barely move to get out of bed. But because I'd painted myself in the corner, I could say, Pastor, <coughs> I'm not going to be able to make it today. No, I have to do what I've been preaching to others to do. Mm -hmm. You talk the talk, you better walk the walk. And so I scraped myself out of bed, and I went, showered myself, ironed my suit, put it on, and I, I went to the church. And the whole way, giving God praise, giving God thanks, giving God praise. I didn't feel like praising Him. And then because we're a Pentecostal church, when I walked into the sanctuary, the band was already practicing at full volume. Come on. My head was pounding. I, my eyes were, <laughs> I was still squinting to see my way to the platform. Yeah, yeah. Every symptom in the world. I got up there faithfully, stood behind the keyboard, and began to practice with the band and sing. And I told him, I said, I'm so nauseous. I said, we'll just keep a can right here by the keyboard. I said, if you see me run off the platform and run out of the church in the middle of praise and worship, just keep on praising. I'll be back. Come on, come and on. And everything that could be coming against me was coming against me. But I, were, I refused to quit praising God. I refused to quit. I knew the kind of benefit it held. So the, the service began. My, my friend, Brad, clicked the first song off, and we began to praise God. And uh, I looked out among the crowd that was there, and all I saw was white spots. And I knew I wasn't healed yet because our church was about 70% African American. <laughs> and so I said, I haven't got it yet. And so I looked out. And the first song, we clicked it off, and I went full blast and began to praise God. Can I tell you, before that song finished, first song, every single symptom ran out of my body. I finished the first praise song of the day in total healing, in total strength, in total glory, just by Hallelujah. praising God. We were, similarly, we were in our annual camp meeting in West Virginia. I was with my father. And I was on the keyboard praising God. And as we were all praising corporately through the auditorium, supernatural, and we're singing one of my favorite songs, When I Die, Let Me Die, Speaking in Tongues. And we're, we're I mean, everybody's <laughs> shouting, everybody's praising. And uh, all of a sudden, while we're praising, nobody was laying hands on anybody. We weren't ministering to the sick, none of that. It was praise and worship service. As we were praising God, we were singing that song, a man in the center section, about five rows back, who had come in, he had been in a car accident and it had injured his back and he had had all kinds of issues through his muscles and joints. He came in on uh, crutches and he was hobbling through the auditorium. The moment we began to praise, he threw the crutches down and took off running around the church multiple Praying times, God. instantly Whoa. healed by the power Whoa. of God. The man who was sitting right behind him, this gets me excited every time I tell this story, the man who was sitting right behind him had had a, a surgery that went bad. The surgery left him blind in his right eye, deaf in his, in his right ear. This side of his face, he was attacked after that surgery. And the moment the man in front of him, one, one seat row in front of him, threw the crutches down and took off running, he started shouting, jumping. You could hear him in the auditorium. I can see, I can hear. Come on. Nobody laid hands on him. Come Nobody on. anointed him with oil. Come Nobody on. put a prayer cloth on him. Wow. Not even a shadow passed over him. But by praising God, mm. supernatural power mm. was released. Yes. And healing virtue yes. came upon his body. Yes. And something doctors could not fix, yes. the Holy Ghost yes. quickly yes. fixed. Yes. The yes. eye began to see. The ear began to hear. Hallelujah. Praise see, God. praise is a weapon. Yes. Come on. That destroys the attacks of the enemy. 
I would have loved to have been there, Doc, when mm. the, the very first time this happened in 2 Chronicles 20, yeah. when three armies united mm -hmm. to try to destroy God's people. I would have loved to be there when they <laughs> gave the instructions to Judah and said, you know, we are going to, all the tribes are going to go to battle. However, we want you to go first exactly. and uh, get way out in front of us there and just, you know, all right, well, where's our, where, what weapons are we taking? Uh, we're not actually going to give you any weapons. Uh, just go ahead and take these musical instruments. Yeah, we, yeah, we'd yeah. like you to actually just sing a little bit and play, and you'll be the first ones to meet the enemy. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen their faces when they were instructed to just go out ahead and praise and sing and carry the ark. But they went in obedience. Judah was the tribe. Judah went first. That, if you don't know, if you... If you're a student of the Bible, you do know that when Judah himself was born, the reason that his mother named him Judah was because it sounded very similar to the Hebrew word yada, which means praise. It's a very uh, exuberant praise. And so the tribe of Judah is the tribe of praise. If you don't know this, every member of the body of Christ is in the tribe of Judah. How do you know? We've come through Jesus, yes. who is the lion, lion of, of the tribe of, of Judah. Judah. Come on. You were Come not on. Uh, uh, from some other tribe. Yep. You came through Christ. Yep. You're in his tribe. Right. He's the head. We're the body. Yes. We're in the praise tribe. That's why for those watching on our, we always call those that join us on our broadcast, I welcome them as the victory tribe because the victory tribe is the praising tribe. Mm -hmm. We are Judah. We are Judah. And Judah went first. And Judah began to praise God. And as they, now think about this. Come on. They carried that Ark of the Covenant. Hallelujah. So and that Ark of the Covenant was the manifest presence of the Most High God. Yes. I think it's interesting, too, that God could only allow His presence to be contained in the Ark. Mm. It couldn't go into their bodies. Their bodies weren't ready for that's that right. anointing. That's right. That's why only now, new covenant believers, you know what Jesus said? He said, I can't take new wine and put it into old wine skins. They'd burst. Yeah. Yeah. How yeah. can you put the Holy Ghost into an unregenerated spirit or an unregenerated body? They would have blown up. So God couldn't put His Holy Spirit in their bodies. That's why if you read the Old Testament, even when the prophets would prophesy, the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord would come upon them. It didn't dwell in them. It came upon them. But now, His Spirit, His presence, His power was carried in that Ark of the Covenant. I find it interesting, too, that when David was bringing the Ark back to Jerusalem, they brought it back on a cart, but that failed. Mm. The anointing is not meant to be carried on a cart. The anointing, and this is why God prescribed this, this is how they were supposed to carry the anointing or the ark. There were loopholes in the side that you put a pole through, and there were men that were to carry the ark on their shoulders. The anointing is to be carried by men and women. It is to be upon us. It's to be in us. And that's why they failed. Because a man, instead of doing what they were supposed to do, they tried to take the easy way out. Right. And they put it on something that would be convenient. And then it caused uh, death. But when they did it properly, victory came to Israel. And that tribe would take the Ark of the Covenant out, the anointing. Notice this. As they're praising God, it's a picture. As they're praising God, the anointing is going with them. Mm -hmm. What took place on that day in 2 Chronicles 20? The Bible says that the presence of the Lord went out ahead of them and caused their enemies to be not only confused, but to begin to fight with one another. Right. Until, I mean, think about how amazing this is. When they got to the lookout point in the wilderness, looked down into the valley, all they saw were dead bodies. Their enemies had all, <laughs> not some, all been destroyed they didn't swing one sword yeah they yeah. didn't throw one spear they didn't hold up one shield you know why the battle's not your battle exactly. this battle belongs to the to lord. lord and when you praise him and petition him 
He will fight your battles yes, yes, yes. for you. Yes, Come on. Yes, yes, but yes, notice yes. this. We're still required to be strong in the Lord. That's the point I'm making. Notice God didn't just say, you all rest at camp. I'll go take care. He said, I still expect you to go out among them tomorrow. Yes. Go out towards your enemy tomorrow. Yes. See, we don't work for God and God doesn't work for yes. us. Look in the New Testament. The Bible says, and the Lord was working with them exactly right. and signs followed. That's exactly he doesn't work for you and you're not working for him and he stays back and doesn't come with you. The Lord works with you. Yes. Yes. You have a part, God has a part. Amen. You have a part, God has a part. And the, the, the wonderful thing is this, when we will dedicate ourselves to building supernatural strength by praise and by standing in His presence, by digging into His Word, you know, that's one of the main areas that many people will leave out of this strength building process. Yes. Because the Bible says, if you actually look, this, this stirs me up. If you look at the armor of God, which is what Paul, the apostle, began to outline after he said, be strong in the Lord. And then he started talking about putting on the full armor of God. Did you know that all of the pieces of armor are really only made up of two elements? Wow. All of the pieces. You have the helmet of salvation. Hmm. What is that? Righteousness or holiness? Right. You've got the breastplate of righteousness, which is righteousness or holiness. You've got the uh, shoes that are the gospel of the preparation of the gospel of peace. What is that? The word of God. You've got the sword of the spirit. What is that? The word of God. You've got the belt of truth. What is that? The word of God. You've got the shield of faith. What is that? How do you get faith? By hearing the word of God. The whole armor is only made up of two elements. It is righteousness or holiness and the word of God. <laughs> If you will dig in, that's why the Bible tells us, Jesus said this in John 15. If you abide in me, that's righteousness or holiness. And my words abide in you. It's just those two elements. It's righteousness or holiness and the word of God. And when you do, it causes God to fight your battles for you. If a man, oh man, let, let me let me give you one. This get Come ready. On, this is good. I want to I want to say this one thing, and I want you to put it in the comments for 2021. Just two words: enemy cancellation. Put right. it in the comments. Right. Enemy cancellation. Maybe you've never seen this proverb in your entire life, but what I'm talking about right here, it brings enemy cancellation. <laughs> Come on. Proverbs 16, and let me give you verse number 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies Come on. to be at peace with him. Yes. <laughs> yes. Enemy cancellation. I don't notice this. Here's the difference of what people think. I don't have to fight my enemies. I just have to please the Lord. Come on. Come on. And if I'll please the Lord. Even my enemies will be at peace with me. <laughs> I want you to expect in 2021 people to show up at your house that don't even <laughs> like you, that haven't liked you for a long time, and say, I don't even know why I'm doing this, but I got to write you this check. Exactly. <laughs> I want you to expect people that don't, they talk about you behind your back. Maybe they've stolen from you. And they come back and pay you with interest and say, I never want to see you again. Rip the check and hand to you. Say, thank you very much. God bless you. Pocket it and say, peace be still. <laughs> Enemy cancellation. When a man's ways please the Lord. I'm telling you. That's right. I'm telling you. What could be more peaceful? What could be more joyful than enemies disappearing? Things that stood against you, vanishing. Things that opposed you, moved come out on, of the way. Come on, too. What could be more joyful? What could be more peaceful? No more drama from these issues. No more, no Come more on. problems. Just moved out of the way. When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I feel the anointing on this today. Something's getting ready to change for you. Something's getting ready to change for your family. Something's getting ready to change Come in on. your ministry. Come on. It's getting ready to change in your business. What you set your hand to do, it's going to be blessed. Yes. 
2021 is going to blow your mind if you're faithful to the Lord. It's going to blow, just like 2020 blew my mind. I was telling somebody yesterday, I had a pastor call me. He said, I need you quickly to shoot up. I didn't even plan this, but now I have to fly out. I'm flying out Saturday. I'm going to South Carolina. And he said, we need you to come right now. Called me last night. I'm coming. But I'll tell you, when, when I start to see these things happen, the whole year's been like that. Right. The whole year has just been one thing after another where God has shown up in unexpected ways. Right. It's, it's interesting to use the term unexpected because I mean it from a natural point of view. Mm. If you're a believer, you're always expecting God to be Correct. good, mm. but maybe his methods you don't expect. Exactly. Exactly. But when I tell you that the whole year has blown my mind, and so I began to share with that pastor on the phone last night. We hadn't talked to him in a while. I said, if you could hear all the things God's done, it's, he said, how things been going? You're, you know, you're an evangelist, you travel. Has everything shut down for you through the year? I said, I've been moving more than I ever have. Mm. I said, we ran like the wind in 2020, and everything about the ministry increased and exploded and expanded in this year. Everything. That's right. When I tell you that since last year we've declared violent increase, expedited favor, it is all that we've seen. Can I tell you? We've not seen one area. Now think how supernatural this is. We've not seen one area of life or ministry in this year that some would say is the roughest year we're at. Not one area has decreased or diminished in this year. Not one. That shows you how supernatural of a God we serve and how everything in the natural does not have an effect on what God has planned for you. I want you to hear this. You say, well, that's just true because you're a preacher, or you're a minister. Or whatever. No, it's true because I'm a believer that's right. that is faithful to the mighty word of God. That's right. And nothing is higher than this word. Exactly. Nothing's more powerful than this word. Not a government mandate, not a lockdown, not a shutdown, not a corporation, not a pandemic, not a virus. Nothing is more powerful than the mighty word Come of on. God. Every enemy has to bow its knee to the mighty word of God. I feel to say this. Because I'm going I'm to talk to you about it for a second, if I have the, a moment. Because this, this is something yeah, no, that needs no, to be said. Yeah. There are things that people, the devil's tried to use it to stop you in your path moving forward, what God's called you to do and what he's called you to, where he's called you to go. And there's an authority that's necessary to rebuke and destroy the attacks of the enemy that are moving against you. There are people in this year that have made mistakes. I've watched it happen. They did not operate in authority. They did not operate in dominion. And they made mistakes because they made choices based on fear. Yeah, yeah. Don't make choices based on fear or threats from an antichrist agenda. Because mistakes, some are easy to recover from. Some are very hard to recover from. Some you never recover from. And you don't want to be flippant about your life. You want to take steps of wisdom from God's word that will keep you in victory. That's why it takes strength. Weak people do not operate in constant victory. Come on. Exactly. You've got Come to on. strengthen yourself. As, as, as Miss Jenny said yesterday, Israel sat up and strengthened himself. Exactly. David strengthened himself and exactly. encouraged himself in the Lord. Yes. You've got to make that decision. I'm not going to fall into the weakness of fear, doubt, and unbelief, mm -hmm. faith moves forward. Mm -hmm. That's right. And Jesus Christ operated very differently in supernatural strength than others and taught his disciples how to do it. Demons did not frighten him like they do many believers today. They believe their house is haunted, they're checking, they're doing all kinds of things to make sure they can get <laughs> evil spirits from under their bed and out of their house. And Jesus operated differently, operated in authority. When he came across the sea, set his foot down in the region of the Gadarenes, a demon-possessed man rushed towards him, the man with a legion of demons. And when he got to Jesus, he didn't begin a fight, didn't slap him, didn't try to tear his clothes off like the demons did in Acts 19 to the seven sons of Sceva. You know what he did? bowed down low before him and begged him, don't harass us before our time. You know what I love that Jesus said? Shut up. <laughs> Jesus 
<laughs> didn't mind being impolite to demons. There are some things you've prayed about too long. Come on. Some things you've, too long. Sometimes you need to just get that kind of a bulldog strength tenacity and just look at that thing and tell it, shut up in Jesus' name. Peace, be still. Shut up in Jesus' name. Well, it's affecting my body. Look in the mirror. Point your finger at that part of your body. Tell it, shut up in Jesus' name. And Jesus spoke a word. Now, he was the word made flesh. The word made flesh that dwelt among us. And Jesus was the walking word. And when you become the walking word, you speak the word. Every time the devil tempted him in the wilderness, what did he do? It is written, spoke the word. Because it's the proper answer to every attack. Praise God. Now let me say that in James chapter 4, the Bible says, Submit yourselves, Mm -hmm. therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will... What? Flee Flee from you. you. So look at that quickly. Because we're talking about guarding your victory in 2021. Comes with praise. Comes with joy. Strengthening yourself. Look at this. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Once again, it comes back to praise. It comes back to thanksgiving. It comes back to the word. Resist the devil. Here's the question, Doc, that many people have. How does one resist the devil? Well, how did Jesus do it? Every time an attack came from the devil, a temptation came from the devil, what did he do? Mm. He spoke the word word. of God. I answer every wicked thing with the word of God. I answer depression with the word. I answer anxiety with the word. I answer sickness with the word. I answer uh, addiction with the word. I answer problems with marriage and problems with children with the word. I answer financial problems with the word. Everything that presents itself to you as a hurdle, a hindrance, an obstacle, you speak to it with With the the word. word. The reason is because everything must answer to the word of God. Everything must answer to the word of God. Everything. Even our prescription for praise that we've been just talking about today, that comes from the Word. The only reason we know it is because the Word of God commands it. God's looking for praising people. You know, I'll, I'll throw this to you because it was very interesting to me. Jesus so had to inhabit the praises of His people that His purpose was literally expedited by their praise. Mm. His flesh, he knew what he was doing when he rode into Jerusalem. He was on his way in for crucifixion, and he knew it. That's why he prayed in the garden. If this cup can pass for me, let it pass. But notice what pulled him in to that city. The Bible says, and they praised him. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. What did they do? Palm branches out. They're praising him as he comes. And as they're praising him, they're pulling him into his destiny. They're pulling him into his purpose. They're pulling him into the city to be crucified. Do you realize that praise put Jesus in position for the act of redemption? They praised him into position. (laughs) They praised him into position. Oh, hallelujah. They praised him into position. The word, I'll say this, the word changes everything. See, they praised him into position. But do you know, a word brought the last act of redemption into place. Jesus spoke one word and ensured his own resurrection. That's right. He said to his disciples, tear this temple down, and in three days, I'll raise it back up again. That was a prophecy. Mm -hmm. If he had not been resurrected after that, he just became a false prophet. Mm -hmm. But because we know he's the word made flesh, he could not be ever made a false prophet. The moment that word left his mouth, guess where it went? Into the future. Yes. Come on. Waited for him in the tomb. Right. 
He didn't rise on the first day or the second day. It wasn't prophesied. But once the third day came, the word was already waiting for him. <laughs> the prophecy was already, and God's word has to prosper in the thing whereunto it's sent. It came out of his mouth as the word of God and waited in the future to manifest on the day. And it didn't delay. And here's how I know. They ran to the tomb on the third day early before the dawn. And before the dawn, before the sun even rose, the stone had already been rolled away. The body was already missing. The grave clothes were laid in place. And an angel was waiting to give them a word. Come on. The word worked so quick, yeah. they couldn't even get there to see it happen. Couldn't get there early enough. They couldn't get there early enough. <laughs> you know how powerful Christ is? He didn't even need to stay dead a full three days. Yeah. Died on the evening of the first day and rose the before morning. the dawn on the third day. <laughs> that's the power of the word, Doc. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, that's powerful. Yeah. That's powerful. Mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. Think about it. In that period, he did everything he promised he would do. That's right. He got the keys of the kingdom. That's right. That you and I can walk in that same victory. Same victory. That you and I can have that same praise, that same power, that same anointing in our lives. That's right. He did it for us. He did it. And you wow. know what is so amazing about that is Jesus, he actually, he kind of, he set up as an example exactly yeah. how we can live. He didn't come here and do stuff so we can all say, oh, that was amazing. But he did it so that we can represent him or we can mimic him or we can, what did Paul say? Imitate. Yes. Imitate him. That's right. Yeah. He did it so that we could imitate him because he said, just as I am, so are you. Yes. On this earth. Not when we go to heaven one day, but now on this earth. And just as Jesus used the word, like you said, Ted, as his automatic uh, place of, of, or come back for every attack. Remember when he was in the desert, in the wilderness, and he was at his lowest physically because he had fasted and had prayed for 40 days. He was without nourishment, physical nourishment. So you know when you have been without food, how it doesn't just affect your physical body, but it affects your mind. It affects your emotions. It affects every part of you. So when you are physically and emotionally in a place of... Um, I would say where you're not strengthened in that area, but you are, you are challenged in that area. Anytime the enemy comes with a thought or comes with an attack, you are more, uh, you're not as resistant as you would be if you were fully nourished or had your full strength or you're in a, a, a sound mind. The Bible says that Jesus had just been, he was a man, 100% man, remember that. So he was just like us and he was without food, he was emotionally in a place where he could have been quite volatile. And when the enemy came with an attack, what was his only response? The word of God. When you are in a place of weakness, the only response you can have is the word of God. Amen. When you are in, a in an area of strength, still the only response you right. can have is the word of God. And when Ted spoke about that scripture in Proverbs 16 verse 7, when a man's ways please the Lord, he makes his enemies to be at peace with him. And the question, your first question should be, well, then how do I please God? How can I be in that position? Well, we know that it's impossible to please God without faith. Right. So your only way to please him and be in this position where even your enemies are at peace with you is to have faith. And the only way you can get faith is by the word of God. And that's exactly what Ted has been saying the whole time. Everything revolves around Jesus, who is the word of God. The word of God can never be placed in any less importance than the first priority in our lives. When we have God's word number one in our lives, we are going to be constantly in a position of victory. It's his word that causes us to be in that place that anchors us, that roots us, that becomes the salvation of our soul. You, they, you can never place more importance on the word of God being first place in our lives. And I think, Ted, you just, it just came out <laughs> in everything that you said today. Amen. The word is everything to us. Everything. And it is alive. It is a person. It is Jesus. Jesus. 
Word made flesh. You know, the reason I like that, and I've done a lot of teaching on this, I'm going to write a book soon on this, mm. is that when the Word is embodied, and that's what he was, and I, I've preached this point many times, John chapter 1 is clear. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was not only with God, He was God. Come on. The reason that I talk about the Word being so powerful is because the Bible teaches us that God is His Word. Exactly. He is His Word. People wonder, how can you quote those scriptures and believe them like Isaiah 55, 11? When I send my Word out, mm -hmm. it always accomplishes what I send it to do, never turns empty or void. The reason is because who can deny God Himself? Who can, who's going to say right. no to God? Right. What demon is going to rebel against him? What demon is going to say, no, you can't heal this person. No, you can't bless this person. No, you can't deliver this person. Who do you think you're talking to? He's the most high God. That's right. And because he is his word, then his word carries the same authority, same authority. as if That's he right. showed up himself. Yes. That's right. That's why Jesus could send a word and heal the centurion exactly. servant. He didn't have to travel there. The authority on the word is just as powerful as the authority in the individual. Come on, that's it. That is this, it. This may blow somebody's mind, but this right here is as much God as the individual seated on the throne. Mm. Yes. The word is God. That's right. That's why when you right. speak it, it has supernatural effects. You can't speak the Quran and have that happen. You can't speak some new age philosophical book and have that happen. Other writings of other religions, you can't do that with the Book of Mormon. You can't do that no. with something written by L. Ron Hubbard. It does not work. No. You know why? It's not the Word of God. Yes. It's not the Word of God. Mm -hmm. The Bible is the Word of God. Always. And when oh. you speak it, it doesn't just fall to the ground and not produce. The Word of, and if, I want you to write this in the comments so that you never forget it. The Word of God carries performance power. The Word of God carries performance power. It's the incorruptible seed. That's right. That's right. You know what I think we need to do, Ted? I know we're going to end tonight at some close. Okay. But I want you at home right now. I just feel there's an anointing right now to put a power seed in the ground for your 2021. This whole night has been so different to what we'd even thought. God just came in and just showed up. I want you right now to take a seed. And I just feel there's a, a moment right now where you need to take that seed and you need to sow it. But I want, you to, I want you to call it your power seed. In the reference bar, I want you to put power seed. This is for the power of God to operate in your life. But what is that? The power of God is the Word of God operating in your life in 2021 like never before. I, I'm, I'm feeling tonight, we've got about 25 minutes left of this whole program. I can't believe time's just rushed like that. Mm -hmm. But I want us to get that power seed in the ground and I'm believing tonight signs, wonders and miracles. We're going to pray for people. Yes. In just a few moments, we're going to declare by faith in praise and then we're going to pray for people. But this seed is going to set you into a place that God has for you in 2021 I'm, I'm telling you, this is going to be the, one of the greatest years ever where, where the prophets have declared it's the year of the local church. It's the year you're going to run. It's the year you're going to shine. It's the year you're going to gather up those garments like never before. Yes. And you are going to run into your future. But as you run into your future, put all these messages of this whole week together. You are running behind your God. He is parting the ways. He is dividing your enemies. You are going through your valley of the shadow of death. You are coming out the other side. I want you to see all of these things we've spoken about tied together. Yes. That's why this is a power seed. Yes. This is a power seed of victory for your life. This is a seed tonight of what God's going to do. If, you, if you're watching on any network around the world, the details are on the screen right now. You can go to myfaith.tv and you can sow that seed. If, if you're watching on, on, on Ted's channel right now, just you put a power seed in the ground there right now. With Miracle Word Network Jesus right now, you put that power seed in the ground. And watch what God's going to do. There is an anointing. There is a power Jesus that God is wanting to release into your life tonight. And I believe it without a shadow of a doubt. I'm trusting God. 2021 
And I'm sad in a sense that we've only got tomorrow and we're done with the live broadcasting from here for, for 2020. Mm -hmm. But this has positioned us, Ted, for 2021 like never before. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, it's going to be an explosive year. I hope people are ready because it's not, <laughs> I've said this so many times, it's not just going to fall on you. Yeah. You have to yeah. pursue it. You have to take it. Running to it. You have to be responsible to declare, I'm going to have what God says I can have. Right. You know, one of the, let me just preface this and say what, where you don't want to be. This is the warning that everybody that hears a prophetic word should always be aware of. In uh, 2 Kings chapter 7, there'd been a famine. And the prophet Elisha begins to prophesy, by this time tomorrow, and he talks about what the price of barley and flour would be at the gate. That's right. And the, the, the king's administrator, the captain, if you will, yeah. he said, well, that, that couldn't happen even if the Lord opened up the windows of heaven. Listen to Elisha's response. He said, not only will it happen, it'll happen, but you won't be able to eat any of it. Come on. Your disbelief in the word of the Lord will not stop it from taking place. It'll just ensure you don't get to participate mm. in what God's going to do. Mm. This is always the warning. Because see, doubt and unbelief keep you right. from receiving what God is going to do. Yeah. You're not yeah. going to stop Him from moving. He's going to move. That's why the Bible says in James chapter 1 and verses 6 through 8, don't be a double-minded man. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways and will not receive anything from the Lord. That's right. I will never be the person mm -hmm. who hears a word from God that God's about to move. I say, well, I don't know if that's really going to could, could happen. It's going to happen. Why would you put limits mm -hmm. on an unlimited God when he knows that he has a plan to bless you and you know that he's able to do it? That's right. Just believe him. If you're going to err on any side, err on believing him believe too much. It. Right, right. Come on. Too much. Yeah. Why? Because he's able. Now unto him who is able, able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that you can ask or think according to the power that works within you. Praise he's going to do it. Praise but don't God. be the person that says, well, you know, look at the way the economy's going. Look at the government. Look at the. Don't look at that mm -hmm. and make your confession based on what's going on in the natural realm. Very good. Make your confession based upon the eternal word. and mighty word of Hallelujah. God. Wow. And you'll wow. see the answer. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Let's get the cup. Let's get the bread. I, I want us to do this right now because, Ted, I want you to get ready and to lead us from the piano for the last 15 minutes or so of today's program and, and to pray for the sick and to minister from there as we go out tonight. But I want us to be in this place of empowered for 2021. If you've put your power seed in the ground, I want you to, to get into that place where faith has arisen inside of you. Say, Lord, 2021 is my year. Amen. It's my year of victory. It's my year. I'm going to run like never before. It's the year of the local church. I, I, I want you to understand what does that mean. That means that you as the body of Christ are going to rise up like never before, empowered to prosper, Amen. empowered in your healing, in your blessing, in every area, everything that your hand touches. In Jesus 2021, name. is going to be blessed. In Jesus name. So, Lord, tonight we come before you. Thank you. And Lord. we remember the blood yes. and the body. Yes. Body broken. Yes. Blood shed. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we've spoken about this whole night tonight. And we are empowering ourselves Praise right God. now by Praise remembering God. that power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Lord. Lives on the inside Thank of you, us. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Thank you for your body. Thank you for your blood. Amen. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Let's partake together. First, the bread. Let's partake of the cup together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. What a night. What a night. 
What a night. Now listen, we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to worship. We've got about 18 minutes left. Jenny and I are going to say goodbye right now. Ted's going to take us home and take us right out. But it's not the end of the program. It's just the end of this moment of the segment because for the next 18 minutes, the power of God through praise, through worship, through the Word is going to touch your life. So I want you to put those communion elements down now. I want you to move that coffee table out of the way and I want you to get ready to praise God. I want you to praise Him. I want you to worship Him. I want you to push through into your victory for 2021. We'll be back with you tomorrow night, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., for our final broadcast right from Marco Island. But for now, Ted, take us home. For it reaches to the highest mountain. I know it flows to the lowest valley. Yes, it does tonight. It's the blood. Gives me strength oh, from day to day. It will never lose its power. Come on, lift those hands wherever you're watching. Oh, it reaches to the highest mountain. And I know it flows to the Lord. the blood that gives me strength all oh, from day to day it will never lose its power Listen. it is the blood that Jesus shed for me oh it's way back on calvary it's the blood that gives me strength oh from day on to day it will never lose its power oh come on sing it reaches for it reaches to the high mountain and I know it flows to the lowest valley it is the blood that gives me strength oh from day to day will never lose its power Listen, it soothes my doubt and it calms all my fears. Oh, that same blood, it dries all, all my tears. It is the blood that gives me strength. Oh, from day to day, it will never. Oh, come on, I feel faith rising. Sing that with me for it reaches to the highest mountain. That's right, come on. And I know it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, it's the blood that gives me strength. Oh, from day to day. We're singing, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus. It is because He first loved me. Oh, come
sing that again. We're singing, oh, how I love Jesus. Singing, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because. Like this to me, he's wonderful. Oh, to me, he is so wonderful. I know to me, he is so wonderful. Oh, to me, he is so wonderful. Just to know. Is just to know that he first loved me. Come on, oh, how I love. Oh, how I love. That's it. Oh, we love him, yeah, singing. Oh, how I love Jesus. Come on, we're singing. Oh, He first. It's because he first. Say it again. Oh, because he first loved me. I feel the anointing right now to pray for those that are watching. There's healing. There are miracles, deliverance that's taking place wherever you're watching. I want you to lift your hands and begin to thank the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. There's nothing impossible for the God that we serve. Nothing. No matter what it is you're dealing with or where you're watching from, healing is available to you today. Deliverance is available to you today. And so I want you to bow your head, and I want you to prepare yourself for what God has for you today. Father, in Jesus' name, I take authority over every sickness, take authority over every wicked thing sent by the enemy to destroy your people. And today we ask you to open the windows of heaven wherever they are. Pour out a healing touch, healing virtue in Jesus' name. Doc, if you don't mind, just play that. I feel the anointing. I want to reach my hands out and pray for every person. Father, there is nothing too hard for you. There is no sickness, no disease that's too big. And today, we're going to see the victory. And so right now, Lord, as we've been singing, by the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed 2,000 years ago, we expect to receive what you've already paid for. You foul spirit of cancer that would try to attack God's people. I'm, I'm, I'm going to take a selfish moment right now. And pray for a friend of mine who the devil has overstepped his bounds and attacked not only a friend of mine, but a faithful member of our church who tried to attack his body with cancer today. You might be watching, suffering from some sort of a sickness or a disease that's put a death sentence over your head. As we're praying for our friend that the enemy's attacked, I want you to jump in on this prayer right now. I want you to stretch your faith because the same anointing that's going to heal him is going to heal you in Jesus' name. And you will live and not die to declare the goodness of God. And so right now, Lord, in Jesus' name, I curse the spirit of infirmity. I curse that cancer that has tried to come upon his body, that tumor that has tried to set up shop in his body. And I rebuke it today in the mighty name of Jesus. I command every cancer cell to shrivel and die by the power of the Holy Ghost. I take authority over every, what I'm going to call, foreign substance in the body. 
And I command it today, loose your grip and let him go. Those that are watching, you need a touch by faith, I declare it. Loose them and let them go today by the power of God. Every foreign substance has to run out of the body. Every cancer cell, shrivel and die. Shrivel and die and pass from the body. Lord, I command the tumor not to shrink, but to disappear by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the doctors be amazed to see that it's no longer there in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you will take all the praise, all the glory, all the honor for what's going on right now among your people. Those watching around the world, you might be on the continent of Africa, you might be in the UK, you might be watching in the United States, you might be watching in any nation via live streaming. You're not too far from where God is moving today. He has no limitation. Distance doesn't limit God. The severity of your sickness or your disease does not limit God. Maybe it's an addiction that you're battling and you've not been able to get free and it's holding your life in an invisible prison or a bondage. Today, it's loosing you and letting you go. As we pray the prayer of faith, the Bible says that the yoke is destroyed because of the anointing. And today, we're going to declare freedom to you right where you are. Maybe you're watching this and you've been bound by heroin. Maybe you've been bound by cocaine or by alcohol. Maybe even nicotine has bound your life and you can't get free. And it's caused you to fall into destruction, ruin. It's brought guilt and shame. From this day forward, we're declaring freedom to God's people by the Holy Ghost. That spirit that would hold you in invisible prison. Spirit of lust for those things of the flesh. We're taking authority over those things that would be the lust of the flesh. In Jesus' name, loose your grip and let them go today by the power of God. I command you to loose your grip. I loose freedom to every man and every woman. I loose freedom by the power of God. Let this be their day of victory and deliverance. In Jesus' mighty name. And Lord, we thank you for Brother Mike, that you're healing him even now. I thank you that healing virtue flows into that hospital room right where he is in Tampa, Florida. Touches his body right now. We thank you that his family has perfect peace. We thank you that a quick recovery is taking place. We thank you he's coming out of the hospital a victorious man, and you're getting all of the glory and all of the praise. We're not giving the praise or the glory to an oncologist. We're not giving it to a chemical. We're not giving it to a procedure. We're not giving it to a surgery. We're giving the praise and the glory to you and you alone. For you'll share your glory with no man. And so we give it all to you. For those that are being touched today, Lord, around the world, we give you the glory and the praise for what you're doing in them. I'm praying now for those that are watching me, and especially now during the holidays, the Lord uh, is going to give you peace and joy like you've never had. Maybe you heard us all day on the broadcast talking about the power of joy, the power of peace, what praise will do for you. But the enemy has launched an attack against your mind. Depression has been your story. Anxiety, maybe sleepless nights. You've been up, you can't sleep. The enemy attacking your mind or your family fear because of what's going on around the world. So many are battling it. My father called me. He said, one of the women here in our town, because of the pandemic, because of the lockdown, so much fear filled her life that she took her own life in her home. Suicidal thoughts. I'm taking authority over these things today. Maybe that it's been months that you've been dealing with these things. But in one moment, see, this is why the psalmist wrote, better is one day in your courts than a thousand days anywhere else. Why? Because God can do for you in one day what specialists can't do in a thousand days. And so I'm going to pray now for deliverance for every person that's watching me. Lord, I take authority today over what your word calls a spirit of heaviness, depression. I take authority over the spirit of fear, spirit of death that would try to kill your people. And right now, I curse it and command it to leave their life in Jesus' name. Heaviness, run out the back door. Fear, run out the back door in Jesus' name. I lose joy. I lose 
peace by the power of God. We thank you for it. We give you praise. Today is our day of victory. Now, right where you're watching and wherever you're watching from, I want you to take this moment right now to lift a shout of praise and shout unto the Lord like it's already done. I want you to give Him glory. I want you to give Him praise. And I want you to stand in a place of victory even before you may see in the natural what's taking place. He's already working behind the scenes. Before we called, He answered us. Hallelujah. Before we called, He answered us. Somebody just declare. You can even write it in the comments. I am free. I am free. I am free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I'm just telling you, I have a, I got a song in my spirit. Before we even let you go today, I feel like we need to praise God and give Him thanks. Somebody, you know what you need to do? Some of you need to get up in your living room, wherever you're at. You need to dance in your house. We do that in our house. You need to just give God praise right where you're watching. But when I grew up, we used to sing a song in these Pentecostal meetings. And it just says like this. Well, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. Come on. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. Say that. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. Say it like this. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. Come on and say you don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. You don't know like I know what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. Come on, it's what the Lord has done for me. Yeah, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. Joy when I think about what he's done for me. What the Lord has done for me. Joy when I think about